already about 10. Okay, welcome everyone. We're just glad that you could come and that we can get together again. It's um, been a few weeks and this Tuesday night meeting is um, <clears throat> special for all of us who have um, grown accustomed to the idea that we are in the cleansing, that we are in the um, refiner's fire time. And I just am so grateful how our Sabbath school lessons this quarter has actually pulled on that concept of the refiner's fire. I just thought it was just so neat because that's what is happening here in the last days where God is trying to get his bride cleansed and ready um, for translation, ready for the second coming. And we're just um, thrilled that God has called each one of us to be a part of that. And I'm thankful for each one of you who've come tonight. We can go ahead and start with a word of prayer and ask the Lord to be with us and to help me to share what's on my mind. So I'm gonna actually kneel down and uh, say a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you love us, that you have created a pathway, you and your son and the Holy Spirit together have come up with a rescue plan for this planet and that you've created the sanctuary model that is there for us to be able to follow so that we can, um, it's like a ladder, a seven step ladder to climb up out of this pit of sin that we have found ourselves in and you've provided that uh, rescue plan. You've reached down um, to pull out us out of a pit, as it says in the Psalms. And we're grateful for that, Lord. And, and we just reach our hands up to you and look to you. I just pray that you will forgive me of all of my sins, Lord, as you know, each one of us have our battle that we have to surrender self. We have to look to you. We have to be cleansed on a deeper level. And we're just so grateful you do, are doing that. Forgive me for my sins and Please, dear God, I just pray that you will come tonight and be with us. Send your Holy Spirit to be with us. Jesus, come and just speak through me and each one, your words and not our own. Speak to our hearts, reveal new things so that we can be released and set free forever. We thank you and just turn this time over to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Well, I wanted to. <clears throat> go over um, just a little bit again, just as a review. <clears throat> that um, there are once again, the three sections of the sanctuary and I'll turn over so we can see the sanctuary a little clearer and how um, we thankfully have the seven steps the gates of praise, uh, confession at the altar of sacrifice. We wash with the water of the word. We can be filled with the Holy Spirit here, step number four. And the table of showbread is Jesus's words that we can eat and digest and internalize his life to replace our life. And then the altar of incense and then the most holy place where this final cleansing is takes place with the Ark of the Covenant and um, where the law is. We have a picture here, the transcript of God's character on the Ten Commandments there <coughs> and, um, and how he wants to write that law into our hearts and to change us so that we think like him. And it's in, in the shape of a heart there. And he wants us to think like he thinks. And there's that text that says um, that uh, no one will see the Lord um, with, uh, that without holiness. And that's Hebrews chapter, um, Hebrews chapter 12, just real quick there. 
I know this is a review for most of us. Um, but Hebrews chapter 12 says, um, without holiness, no one will see the Lord. That's verse 14. And so God is trying to bring us into agreement with him um, that in the, as he's writing that, his character, those 10 commandments into our minds and into our hearts with his finger, just like he wrote in the stone, except now instead of sto no stony hearts, he wants a heart of flesh. He wants to write that in our hearts. Um, then we will be in agreement with him on everything. And uh, I know that I'm not in agreement with God on everything. Um, at different times, he'll put me into another refiner's fire and he'll take me through an experience that I want to share tonight that reveals to me that there's areas that are not in agreement with him. And so, but through, by talking things through, working things through, then we can come into harmony with his brain, his mind on everything. So then I just want to go over again, the three steps. The courtyard is behavior and the holy place is thoughts and feelings, our thoughts and feelings, because we are a temple. So we have the thoughts and feelings here. And then in the holy, most holy place is the motives, the deep, deepest part. And so I just wanted to review that really quick again, um, because I just want to focus on that as we think about how I was going through um, a route and it encompassed all three sections of the sanctuary. And so as I'm troubleshooting, I wanted to walk you through what I was walking through so that God can take you through those same exact three steps. So uh, what I discovered um, oh, and then I just want to say that what God seems to do is take us through a setup, is what we call it, where he's removing the veil of our subconscious mind here, this veil, and, and he's allowing things to leak out into our daily experience that maybe we had victory with before. We might have had victory. Um, we um, are at peace with something. We haven't struggled for 20 years, you know, and yet God wants to uncover, unveil in our subconscious mind that there's an area that he sees that we still haven't had victory on. And then when we're in that hot trial, that refiner's fire, that setup will happen. And then he allows the heat to come out. We're being melted down so that the dross can be lifted up out. And so now we find ourselves falling maybe in an area, becoming impatient. And for me, um, you know, I am a calm and patient person by nature. And I, um, a lot of times don't even have to struggle with it. And I was thinking the other day that a lot of incoming data for me um, I go out on the, the porch of my little sanctuary and go out on the porch and then all these things happen. You know, people are freaking out or um, things are happening, but I kind of feel like I'm just down on my porch and I am organizing the data and it's just, I'm staying all calm and peaceful or if somebody's just explaining something to me, I am just out on the porch and I'm just out there and kind of, I don't bring it into my inner sanctuary right away. Like the Lord was kind of just showing the different personalities that we have where some people, all that incoming data just goes shoop, right into their heart, right into their mind and causes them to feel maybe anxiety right away and feel stress and 
and everything. And it's not even coming in for me. It's out here and I'm just processing it. I'm analyzing it. I'm, you know, it hasn't even reached my emotions yet in the deeper core of me. And that's just the differences in personalities. And a lot of times extroverts are experiencing and in tune with everything in their environment all at the same time. And I'm more like a little turtle and I'm just like this in this little shell and, and, you know, stuff just is bouncing off my little shell, you know, <laughs> and I'm just described this so that you can pinpoint who you are, where you are, how you experience um, trauma and stress in your daily experience, in your daily life, how you process. And so, but I will say that when um, the Lord was wanting me to put me in a fire, he really has to heat the fire up really, really, really hot. Like I have to have 20 major things happening on a long-term basis that are unresolved and in a really stressful situation in order for me to start to feel the heat. Um, and that's what God was doing to me. <laughs> he says, all right, I need you to go through another route. And so he's like got everything all stirred up at a really high, high level. And then um, he was allowing a setup to happen that was triggering me on a consistent basis over and over and over again. And finally, 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 I started becoming impatient. And, you know, I can say that 10 or 20 years can go in between these times where I feel impatient. And yet the Lord allowed that to happen. And for each one of us, it can be different um, um, amounts of pressure or heat that can allow these things to happen. And you may find these things, these scenarios coming in your life. And so now, it's like I am triggering, I'm speaking impatiently to um, my mother on a daily basis. This, this happened a couple months ago um, or maybe a month ago, I don't know now. I know that I was wanting to share um, last Tuesday that we met last month and I was wanting to share something the Tuesday before, the month before, so now I'm confused and yet we had couple of other people that had really important testimonies to share. So I'm waiting until this month to share my trigger, my experience that I was going through. So, um, and I, it was just really confusing to me as to why, it, I, you know, several times a day, sometimes I was being irritable with my mother. I was being irritable with other people. Um, and it's like, usually I can get a grip and I was not getting a grip. I was not getting a grip no matter what I was trying to do. And, you know, normally I can even work with a house full of, or a classroom full of kids and it does not push me over the edge. Then on top of that, it was just happening over like um, a month or two time frame. I, I maybe it was... Yeah, I think it was a several month build up. And then um, I actually like got really upset. I got really upset at my mom. And then I got really upset at one of my really close friends and just like got angry. And I'm just not even used to getting angry. <laughs> And so it was really upsetting to them and upsetting to me because they're not used to me doing that either. And um, I'm like, Lord, I am having a meltdown. I cannot believe this. Please, please show me what is going on. And so um, I'm, I'm dealing now with the three sections of the sanctuary. My behaviors out here were going off the charts with getting angry and upset and impatient, but what is behind these behaviors that everything is spilled off out into? Because this doesn't come from nothing. If we're failing in our behaviors, we need to go back inside our sanctuary 
to where our thoughts and feelings are and really talk to the Lord about what we're thinking and what we're feeling. And I couldn't even, I mean, I'm so used to being able to like pinpoint it and say, okay, I'm thinking this, I'm feeling that. Yep, I got that. And figuring it out, processing it, working through, having victory. But I could not even figure out, I'm like, this is really deep because of into my, you know, subconscious mind for me not, not to be able to troubleshoot and work it through with the Lord and figure it out. And so um, <clears throat> obviously behind our thoughts and feelings now is the motives and how I like to describe <clears throat> our motives that are behind our thoughts and feelings. Our motives are created uh, once again in our childhood in the first seven years in the womb, the first three and a half years of our life and the first seven years of life, significant areas where we are being programmed. Um, it, our character is being programmed. Um, and like, I also like to use the word belief system. All of our thoughts and feelings in early childhood develop and form into our belief system upon which our thoughts and feelings then ever after um, are built upon that foundation of our belief system. And these things are passed down to us through our, our childhood, our parents, <laughs> their belief systems are, are pounded into us and how we see life, how we perceive incoming data. And each person is so unique in how our belief system is based on our family, based on our culture, based on um, all of our life experiences that have happened, it forms who we are. And they are in our subconscious mind. So much of it, we don't even know what our belief system is because it is um, <clears throat> nonverbal. It's in our amygdala, which is, is um, you know, all the memories all of our emotions, our emotional memories, not in words, but our emotional memories all the way back to the womb. And, and we don't even have words because when we're a baby, we don't have words to, uh, to articulate what we're thinking. And so we just have these emotions that are happening. And, um, and so God wants to go back and reprogram, reprogram our thoughts and feelings. And that's why we're in this crucible in the refiner's fire to bring words, to wrap words around it and to then work it through with God saying, Lord, just like Job, didn't Job try to work things through? Didn't Abraham um, and, and try to work things through. In the scriptures, we see the patriarchs, the matriarchs, um, the godly people trying so much to um, wrestle with God. The, the greatest one really is Jacob, as he was wrestling all night long. And in the end of time, you and I are going to be wrestling like in Jacob's trouble, trying to connect with the mind of God. What is God thinking and feeling what how is he processing things um i want to process them like jesus jesus went through everything that we could possibly go through now he wants to pass that on to us so that we can have the mind of christ so one of the things that i do is i ask a lot of questions and we start out with what are my behaviors? All right, my behaviors are um, frustration, impatience that's coming out. Why am I impatient? Why am I frustrated with this person? Why am I irritated? What are my thoughts and feelings now that are behind that? Why, why are these? things happening and so I kept thinking uh and going over that 
and saying, Lord, why, what am, what is the big deal that's causing me to be so impatient? Why is this um, frustrating me so much? And um, <clears throat> eventually, praise the Lord, since I couldn't figure it out on my own very well, the Lord was able to um, reveal to me as my mind was opening and I'm in prayer and I'm asking, what is causing this to be so frustrating to me every time that I am, that I am reacting back? And all of a sudden, I felt like the Lord was showing me that it's because this person is not understanding what I'm saying. I am trying to explain myself. And so then I'm seeing, all right, so when I'm feeling frustrated now in this behavior, that what I was doing is trying to explain myself very thoroughly. Now, this is not um, when I blew up really big. This was the over a couple months of time that I saw the daily frustrations. And so what I would do is I would explain it in great detail to this person. And then they would not really seem to understand what I was saying. It's like, I gave every shred of evidence, you know, why is this person not understanding? And then a little bit later, they would say something else that revealed they didn't understand. All right, well, I'll explain it again. So I'd explain it again and again, and then they would forget maybe. And later on that day or the next day, it would come up again. And I was explaining it for the, like the 10th or 15th time it felt like to me. And so it was like, um, finally, I'd get really impatient about it. And it's like, I have explained this so many times. Why is this person not understanding what I am saying? And so then I was explaining that to the Lord. Okay, that person is not understanding me. No matter what I'm doing, they are not understanding me. And so that would be then the holy place, the thoughts and feelings. So what is causing me to be frustrated, impatient, is that I'm not being understood. Okay, so that puzzle piece was helpful. And for a little while, that helped me. <laughs> but then I found I was still not having control. And I was still being uh, triggered after a certain period of time. I was trying to let it go. And you know what? It's just okay. <laughs> if they don't understand, they don't understand. It's all right. But it wasn't all right. And I kept you know, it would make me last a little bit longer, maybe another day or two, but then I'd come out again and just be like explaining it in a frustrated way, so loud. And <laughs> I said, dear Lord, help me. Okay. So what, now I had to go back to the drawing board. Why is this feeling of being misunderstood such a big deal to me that I'm getting angry about it? Why can't I be at peace? Why isn't it okay for people to not understand what I'm saying? So then I'm asking those kinds of questions. Why is being misunderstood such a big deal? And, and, and help me to go back now to my childhood, because obviously it goes back to the motives. Obviously it's going deep into my subconscious mind, into my childhood that's causing me trauma to be misunderstood. What is the big deal? So that's when I felt like the Lord was revealing to me that I felt, because I kept asking in prayer for him to reveal deeper, that the Lord revealed to me that as a child, a young child or a baby or whatever, that <coughs> if I could have explained to my mother how traumatic it was for me to be left in the hospital and all my roots for those of you who are kind of listening maybe for the first time all my roots seem to basically most of them anyway 99 percent of everything goes back to my hospital experience when I was four and a half months old 
and I was in the hospital for seven days and my mom was not able to come and uh, uh, come to, you know, and, but I was at, you know, safe in the hospital, everything seemed fine. And she actually worked with those nurses in the, in the in NICU and in the nursery. And, you know, so it felt like home to her and felt like it would be fine. And in 1965, you know, there just wasn't as much light out there about, you know, what a baby might be going through or not going through. And she knew the nurses were loving and kind and all of that. So everything, I should be fine. But um, I ended up having trauma from being separated from my mom and during that time. And so I have a lot of issues of abandonment that went back to that, where I got disconnected from her emotionally and disconnected from God during that time. And so what the Lord was showing me now in this new kind of scenario, this new setup is that in my mind, um, that after she came back to get me, that I was not able to bridge the gap back to her completely. I was not able to reattach to her completely when I was back home again. And that in my psyche, in my mind, that I felt if I could explain how traumatic it was, if she could just understand me, it would be all right. I could rebond with her. I could reconnect with her and help her to know what my needs are so that she could um, reach across the gap and reconnect with me. So it was this desire to be understood and to be reconnected so that I wouldn't feel abandonment anymore. I wouldn't feel that trauma anymore, but I was not able to reach across the gap to her as a baby, as a four and a half month old baby or a five or six month old baby now. And my mom noticed, and I have had issues all of my life where um, I would not cry. I was a very quiet, compliant little baby, you know, that little turtle in the shell. And I would not cry out like a normal baby for long periods of time. And then I would cry out and I was unconsolable. And I would cry and I would be in hysterics because it's like I was waiting for something. I was waiting to be understood. I was waiting to connect. And the time period would go so long that then I would just be hysterical and I'd cry and cry and cry and cry. And no matter what she would do, she could not console me. And it was during one of those times that one other really traumatic thing happened, which is that my dad got upset about my crying and that I was unconsolable. And my sister remembers this so well. And she was so upset because then my dad, now my mom was remembering that he took me by my heels and shook me upside down out of frustration, like get a grip, get a grip, you know? And here I was in my most vulnerable spot emotionally. And I feel totally misunderstood, totally misunderstood and just freaked out, rolled my eyes back in my sockets, completely became unglued. My sister says that my dad threw me up in the air and was throwing me up in the air to try to like get me to wake up and stop this cry. And of course it made it so much worse. And I had so much trauma and fear from that experience that uh, my mom wondered if I was gonna lose my mind. And so she got blessed and she was able to um, take her garments off so that she was bare skin and then took my garments off. And so it was bare skin to bare skin. Um, and then she wrapped me up in a blanket, like trying to take, put me back in the womb, a womb experience and just covered me all up and just 
comforted me and and until I was able to gain control. And many of you have heard this story. I've told a number of times. And and but but there in that comfort of that womb experience, I I was able to get a grip, you know, of my emotions and feel comforted. Um, and and there in that sense, my mom was being able to second witness me to understand and and second witnessing is so core and my mom is going to this friday night um, for our friday night meeting she has some new insights on how important it is to be second witnessed like heard and understood and how the god had second witness each other and how we crave and need so deeply to be second witnessed and heard and and understood that then it brings about peace and we um we when we feel disconnected when we feel that people do not understand us do not hear us uh we feel isolated and alone and abandoned basically abandoned, even if we're with people, even if we're close to people, we may not feel close, we may not feel bonded, if if they don't understand us, if they don't know who we are, if they don't second witness, like we're the first witness and there's second witness, then it can, it, it can cause such distress in us. Um, and God wants to heal that. He wants to be able to heal that. So he was showing me that when I was going through trauma as a baby, when I was feeling disconnected in my childhood and not being able to reattach and rebond with my mom properly, that it's that I felt this this craving and this um, unnatural desire to be understood, so that then that rebonding would happen. And that then I, you know, dreamed that they, we would be able to be reconnected. And <clears throat> so a lot of that, praise God, has been able to happen. And, um, you know, but God has, uh, it, all of our roots go back to a place where a human can no longer reach us. And it's going to have to be between us and God. And so whatever that trauma is from babyhood, and I even brought my little baby back out, that little baby that, um, that is um, where when we are babies, we are created to be able to connect with our parents and bond with them. And in, in, in area, any area that we have received trauma and we are no longer able to reconnect with our parents um, in that area, then God um, is going to be the only one. Now, our parents sometimes can work with us um, and we can get further. And... Um, we may have a, a girlfriend, we may have a counselor or a therapist that can work with us through that traumatic experience. And I know that my mom has done a lot to, to minister to me, but when push comes to shove, when the rubber meets the road, even if we're counseling with somebody, it's really only the Holy Spirit, only God. And we need support systems to talk with others, but only God is going to be able to re-attach uh, to us on those deep levels that we needed as an infant and as a baby or a young child, um, uh, wh whatever age that is, to re-attach in that solid, solid way. And so now I need to go to God. And sometimes it's helpful to talk to other people too. And God may have somebody in, in your life like that to work things through. Praise God when we have that. Um, but in our worships, we need to be able to go to that place with him and say, dear God, I need an extra level of understanding from you to be that balm of Gilead to press next to you so tight, like as if I'm an infant 
again, as if I'm in the hospital again. And now, Jesus, you were always there that whole entire time. You were always there and you've healed me in other aspects of this broken experience. But now I need for you to heal me on the being understood part. The being understood that you were there, you understood my pain. You understand how frustrating it is that you're not being second witnessed or connecting with somebody in the present. But I need to be able to get into left brain logical to realize that now, here and now, I need you to replace that mommy figure of the long ago, that person that I'm not going to look to others anymore. I'm not going to look to others when I'm feeling triggered about being misunderstood. I want to bond with you and have you replace that spot in me. So then I walk through uh, the steps of the sanctuary and I praise his name at the gates and say, thank you that you understood everything from my babyhood. You understood when I was in pain and, and maybe mommy didn't know everything. We parents don't. We parents don't know everything our children are going through in the womb and in babyhood and everything. And, and we cannot hold them responsible for every little thing that we've thought or big things that we've thought and experienced. But Jesus does. Praise your name, Jesus, that you understand. You understand everything. Forgive me now. Step number two, forgive me for believing the lie that I have to have my mommy understand me now <laughs> or somebody else to understand me. Forgive me for needing, uh, for believing any lie like that. Help me to believe the truth that as long as Jesus understands, that's all that matters. And anything that he might not have understood before, which I'm sure he did understand everything, he went through it on the cross. Everything that he needed to understand about the human experience, human pain, human separation, was he not disconnected from his father on the cross? Everything he understands to the utmost and is wants to bond with us on the cross. Jesus and you can bond on that experience. Jesus, help me not to look to any other person, any other human for understanding, but have complete peace. You are the prince of peace. Isaiah 26 I think it's verse three that says, I will keep you in perfect peace, whose, him whose mind is stayed on thee. When our minds are so stayed on Jesus that he is understanding us, even if nobody else is understanding us, that that is enough. Jesus is going to be enough. Forgive me, Lord, for looking to any other human being. Help me to look only to you. Forgive me for being all upset and help me to just look to you. Thank you, Jesus. And then washing with the water, the root word of truth that Jesus understands me. And I get texts about that specific thing. And I don't have those available right now, but, but you know, there are so many beautiful texts about he understands us. He knows the pain we're going through. He knows the suffering we're going through. And we can claim those texts and find peace in him on that. And then we have the Holy Spirit that can fill us with his love and joy and peace here at the, <clears throat> um, the candlesticks. Love, joy, and peace, patience, kindness goodness, faithfulness. He's being patient with me. He knows how hard it is to be misunderstood and he's patient with me. And now I can turn around and be patient with that other person when I'm so filled with his patience, his understanding. And then we have wisdom, knowledge, understanding. That's one of the aspects of the Holy, the, the seven aspects of the Holy Spirit wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. 
he understands us. That's a part of his blueprint that he can connect with you on, that we don't have to be babies bonding with mommy anymore. We are babies bonding with Jesus and we can grow up in Christ in that area so that we're no longer little children anymore, but we're grown up and have the mind of Christ and leaning 100% of ourselves on him with that understanding, counsel, power, fear of the Lord and discernment and good judgment. Lord, I need more understanding on this. I need more wisdom. I need more discernment to work through whatever it is. We can look fully to him and he will do it. He will do it more than he says he'll give his Holy Spirit more than parents would give good gifts to their children. And that's what we can look to and rely on him in those deep areas of our soul that have been traumatized, very deep areas of our soul that Jesus can do that for us. And then we have on the table of showbread, which is the words of Christ, the life of Christ, his empathy and sympathy with us because he walked here. He, how did he think? How did he feel? How was he able to be outward focused? Once he was filled with understanding now, he and wants to fill me with understanding. And then I want to give that to the other person. Can I give special levels of understanding to that other person so that they feel that I'm understanding them rather than me being self-focused now with my emptiness in that area, my weakness in that area, I can now give double levels of understanding because I have a lot of empathy in that area. I can doubly minister to people who feel misunderstood because I'm being healed. I'm being understood by God and being able to reach out and give to that other person. And I can intercede at the altar of incense. I can be an intercessor now for other people who are struggling with being mis misunderstood. <clears throat> and then I can go to the, to the most holy place and have written on my heart where I can, in, and for me in, in number five, honor, your father and mother, that I can honor my mother and be patient with her with all that healing taking place. Um, and uh, I can not be a false witness, um, bear false witness against my neighbor where there's falsehood and all roots goes back to a lie of the enemy, um, of being misunderstood by God, of whatever else that would cause me to freak out on somebody, be angry at them and believing some kind of lie. So now I can be, have that law, that truth written on my heart that God understands me. And I want to reach out with that understanding to the other person, whatever they're saying, rather than being triggered and, and um, self-protective when that neighbor <laughs> that neighbor has come and is saying things that I can um, look for the truth, look for the good, look for the positive in that other person and minister to them, reach out to them and have the law of God written on my heart of compassion and empathy that God has for me and now that I have for others. So that is my little experience that I am so thankful that God has been re relieving me. I'm not 100%, but I feel like 98% of the time that I'm having this tremendous victory. And I know God's going to take me 100% of the way. <laughs> and this sanctuary and the sanctuary steps are providing the tools for me to, to be able to take those levels of frustration and be cleansed, wa wash uh, like launderer's soap, you know, because this whole uh, refiner's fire program that I have shared in the past, and, and you can Google 
um, the mountain refuge ministries.com um, and and our YouTube channel is Mountain Refuge Ministries um, is our YouTube channel name also, where I was teaching about the refiner's fire. And um, that's what this whole refiner's fire is from Malachi chapter three, verse two, where it says that Jesus is sitting in the most holy place time that Jesus is sitting as a refiner of silver and gold, and he has launderer's soap. And so this sanctuary is like a little washboard where we can wash and scrub our robes in the blood of the lamb. <laughs> and these steps, as we go over them with Jesus in um, the, the different steps are going to cleanse away the deep roots of a heart and to fill our emotional needs to, to, so that our motives can be pure and we can um, <clears throat> have uh, pure thoughts and feelings and pure behaviors because he is washing those motives um, with his word, with his law, with his truth so that we can be new creatures in Christ in every area. I'm ready for the second coming of Jesus. So anyway, that I wanted to not only tell you my story, but uh, apply it to the sanctuary steps and the process that God has been showing me of how to walk with him in the sanctuary to find that those um, deepest levels of cleansing. So hopefully that was um, helpful to somebody anyway. Um, to go review. Some of it was a very much of a review for you, um, but for others that might be a helpful review or a helpful start in how the Lord can take our moment by moment trials, frustrations, and bring them all the way to victory. So maybe I could just say a little prayer. I don't know how long that took for me to share, but I just want to say a little closing prayer on that little segment. And then I want to open up and maybe have um, each one of us share either a little experience or how that affected you or we, uh, a prayer request that we can pray for something you might be struggling with. Um, and intercede this evening and after a little bit with some prayer time um, about an area that you want the Lord to reveal more light, more insights for you as uh, you're going through something. So let's have a little word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that um, you have revealed uh, for many of us different insights that have helped us gain the victory over something that we're really struggling with. And I thank you for revealing this thing about how overwhelming it was to me to be misunderstood, Lord. And I'm just so grateful that you, part of your character is understanding and how wonderful that is that you can provide that for each one of us and what victory we can have in our life when we're so attached to you. We just thank you for that. And I just pray that you will um, bless each one of us tonight as we think about different areas in our lives that we're struggling with, maybe an irritation or an attitude that we don't want anymore. And we just want to throw it away. And we just pray that you will give us victory. Just Help us tonight to be able to share and reveal and um, be open tonight with one another uh, in this cleansing process as sisters in Christ. In, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.